Hi guys. Okay, we are back with a very lengthy message for Iran. Yahweh has prepared this for Iran. He says, quite frankly, he's sick, sick to death of talking to the Christians. However, uh, some of you may be interested in what he has to say to Iran. Okay, now, to hold your interest, this message is entirely for Iran, encouraging them to follow Yahweh's instructions and with the Arab League, backed by Russia, deploy several million soldiers via Egypt into Palestine. Naturally, Yahweh is rejected by the Christian Zionist West. The capstone is the Lord himself. Therefore, he rejects the West. In this series, he reveals the 2300 days of Daniel prophecy, a day being a year predicting not 1844, but 1944. Yahweh's rebirth confirmed by solar eclipses in 457 BC and 1943 and 1944. The destruction of the invaders, Israel, and the rebuilding of the temple to himself, Yahweh. Now, Rabbi Yitzhak Kaduri died in 2006. He was the leading rabbi in Jerusalem at the time, who had an angel appear to him, telling him that Jesus is back. The USS Enterprise is set up as a sacrifice with a nuclear weapon on board to sink it, blame Iran, and then start World War III. Now, solar eclipses of 457 BC identifies the Lord verse number total of 6,666 and two solar eclipse dates 2,300 and 100 days apart. That equals January the 25th, 1944. The Cyrus Cylinder and the decree to build the temple in 2012 and is why Iran with the Arab League and Russia liberate the Palestinians. Google Earth deception using fake photo over the Great Pyramid to the Lord. Why? The following is the area in square kilometres from the South Pole to the solar eclipse of January the 25th, 1944. It, 8,888.8 miles to Yahweh's birth crib, where he lived until 942 days old. Then, to the November 14, 2012 eclipse, it being 942 miles from the same crib. The area in square kilometres is the same number as the height of the pyramid up to the rejected capstone. That leads us to John 21:25, quoting, And there shall also many other things which Jesus did, the which, if they should be written, every one, I suppose that even the world itself could not contain the books that should be written. Amen. Here are the two eclipses occurring. One announcing the arrival of the Christ back to the earth. January the 25th, 1944. 14 days after his rebirth, January 11, 1944, on a full moon. The distance, 8,888.8 .8 miles from his birth crib. And then the final eclipse of 2012, occurring on November the 14th, 2012, measuring 942 miles from that same crib. The area in between, 45454 square kilometres. And from that's... Oh. From that area, there's the two eclipses, and it goes down to the south pole right. back up again. Okay. In addition, the distance from St. Margaret's maternity, now St. Margaret's Hospital, Sydney, Australia, is where Yahweh was uh, housed, if you like, and where he was born. To the south pole, measuring the distance, is 3877 miles, which is the word God verse total. And from 
his birth home where he lived until he was 942 days, the area between the two locations and the South Pole is 942 square miles. Now in the original languages the word God uh, has um, concordance numbers and they mean different things. So you can put down 433, 410, 430, etc, 429. They all mean a different aspect of the God. It's almost like looking at the uh, Hindi religion where they have the several arms of the uh, Kali. Um, it is something like that. However, the Jews and uh, the Freemasons put them all together and lumped them all as God. So when you read something that might be the God, meaning that it is not a real God, but has the same connotation because it's G-O-D. This is why the Jews won't write the word G-O-D or say it. They put a G and then a dash and a D, but they also won't say the word Jesus, and then we'll cover that later. Both are God. Here we have um, the distance from the uh, uh, maternity ward and the house that I was raised in for 942 days. The two numbers, the 3875 from the house, is um, Yahweh, the Holy Ghost of Jesus, the Comforter. The other one is 3877, which is how many verses there are with the word God in it. Down to the South Pole and back, it contains an area of 942.4 square miles. Now, uh, that's as, as uh, close as I could get it. Would it not be reasonable to assume that we're all in hell? No point waiting for a Messiah. The latest news report by independent observers in the Middle East that 12 trucks were destroyed with two containers full of Israeli and US made weapons that were captured in Lebanon, headed for Syria. Another report, US troops in Iraq captured Iraqi snipers. When strip searched, they were tattooed with the Star of David. If Jesus was true, would it not be reasonable to assume no religion will have the second coming right and they will all need correction? The Quran was begun by an angel talking to Muhammad. His descendants, minor prophets, contributed to its formation. However, most were beheaded and or hanged. Then, like the Bible, Rome organized a manipulation and today we have Saudi Arabia beheading women, cutting off limbs, as the Saudis, the enemies of justice, and Iran are Muslim Zionists. If caught distributing a Bible or New Testament, severe penalties, jail, hanging, beheading. If you're an Arab, the same in Israel. One more, two more. At this moment, Iran and its adversaries, the Zionist-dominated West, Saudi Arabia and other anti-Iranian nations, are meeting in New, York, in New York at the United Nations. Now, the United Nations is simply a puppet of the USA and England. It was established by the USA in 1940 itself, as all covert political structures are, intended to monitor and control laws that give the world order complete control. There's only 60 million of them, isn't there? Laws? Yes. Codes. Statutes. <laughs> now Benjamin Netanyahu continues his idiotic repertoires with the dangers of Iran having a nuclear bomb, yet states Iran is talking about the Mahdi is at hand. In a strange way drawing attention to Mahmoud Ahmadinejad, saying the same thing. Mahmoud continually speaks of Jesus and the Mahdi soon to be with them. Muslim clerics require a slight correction. Some say Jesus and the Mahdi are two individuals. Others say that Jesus did not die on the cross, that Jesus was not God. But most quite quiet Muslim women believe that Jesus is back, is God, but are subdued by Muslim men obsessed with the law, like the aggressive big mouth at a union meeting, most Israeli infiltrators. Mm. <coughs> now the the Federal Reserve banking monopoly has control of all nations. 
Libya broke away as did Iraq, Saddam selling oil for the euro and Libya selling oil for gold, backing the African nation's currency with the dinar, precisely as Jesus would do. The dollar paper backed currency owned by Rothschild Bank of London, the Rothschild Bank of Berlin, the Warburg Bank of Hamburg, Warburg Bank of Amsterdam, Lazard Brothers of Paris, Israel Moses Thief Banks of Italy, Chase Manhattan Bank of New York, Goldman Sachs of New York, Lehman Brothers of New York, Kuhn Loeb Bank of New York, financed the rebels in Libya and Syria. They have all one thing in common, Zionism. And Zionism is the abomination that makes desolate, the demonic inspired false nation of Israel. Now Yahweh has laid out how to liberate Palestine via Egypt and land millions of soldiers. The Jews fear this most of all, yet most Jews would welcome it, that this is the people who are living there, would welcome it as they also are dominated by the Zionist Freemason Satanists like Netanyahu and their former leader Zariel Sharon. These psychopaths are simply puppets of America and England. So the point being, we don't want uh, any rockets falling on uh, innocent people mm. and um, babies and so forth in Jerusalem or anywhere else. So the way to do it is just force of numbers. Let's walk in yes. peacefully and if in some terrorist takes a shot at you, which an Israeli soldier, shoot him. Within the Bible, it is the rewritten Catholic abomination, this being the King James 1611 Bible. It is set as a trap that, like Aramaic within the English language, lays dormant the mathematical answers to the dem demonic inspired will of men who have constantly retranslated the text into new and supposedly better understandings uh, that are to be more easily understood. In the West, freedom of religion, Yahweh will end that. Copyright laws dictate requiring any translation to be universally altered so as not to infringe upon the original, and then it can be sold. In the same way, the words of Muhammad lay dormant in the monastery on the slopes of Mount Sinai, within the safety of the Eastern Orthodox conclave, St. Catherine's. It cannot be adequately translated into English as the glorious Arabic language punctuates more precisely the words of God through Muhammad, saying, love the Eastern Orthodox Christian. That's Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, Russia. The Prophet began a wonderful work we know today as the Quran. It, like a ticking time bomb, awaits the exposure of the similar language codes making the words of Yahweh himself beyond manipulation by men who used it in the past to force absolute observance. That time has passed, for within its verses are scatterings of profound truth that identify himself, Yahweh, as the creator. For this reason, Yahweh's gospels were spoken in Aramaic. As such, the time had come in recent years within Iran for clerics to see through enlightened eyes the glorious work they had before them translating the contents of the words and forevermore revealing the contents, opening the cover to gaze in wonderment with enlightened eyes, being the greatest swindle the world has ever experienced, the denial that Jesus and Yahweh are one and more recently that Yahweh has returned to the earth, has chosen Iran as the protector of the righteous and to remove the cancerous abscess, which is Israel, and to liberate the holy people of Palestine. Yahweh has laid out a simple truth. The focal of enlightenment will be further advanced by the act of doing, not talking. As Palestinians have the spirit resurrected by suffering, as such they have taken up the cross and followed Yahweh into the resurrection. Iran, with its glorious history, has always obeyed God. The book of Isaiah, the prophet that, as Jesus, he most referred to as the truth 
the light and the way. It was set upon by the Jews to take for themselves during the Seven Day War. The Isaiah scroll inadvertently drawing attention to its importance housing it within a museum of safety in the Holy Land. Now Isaiah died 118 years before the Persian king Cyrus was born. Yet predicted by name, the Persian king would build the temple of Yahweh. More on this later. However, Moses likewise had an angel speak to him, not God. And he, Moses, condemned Israel and would be destroyed in the days of the judgment, which is now. That was his condemnation, the destruction of Israel. Now, presently, there are warships gathering in the Mediterranean. The timing of the arrival of the USS Enterprise is a secret, making it the red flag to watch, as it is a weapon of unprecedented power, notwithstanding it is an arsenal of nuclear weapons, far more dangerous. Its nuclear capacity for world destruction is in the power plants, the fuel rods. Now Yahweh advises mothers, fathers, wives, husbands and children to alert the crews on board to investigate the covert placement of detonation devices that will plummet the enterprise into the depths, killing absolutely all on board as well as all ships in the vicinity. Members of the general public who have Magellan GPS handheld units to watch for the sudden unexplained rotation of the screen. This was common during the Iraq invasion as all GPS satellites are controlled by the US military. The war planned requires Iran to appear to strike a US ship. The reality is Israel intends to use its covert infiltration to sink the enterprise, releasing the nuclear contaminants into the depths, pollute the sea, and infuriate the families of the USA into demanding Iran be annihilated. This is the last card that Israel has up its sleeve. What the Zionists have achieved is proving absolutely that Yahweh is the reborn, resurrected Holy Ghost of Jesus. For the Christian world is devoured by the Bible. It has established a wall of ignorance. The mind of the Christian is flawed by the limited mental powers of the worshippers. Yahweh uses colourful language. They say, my Jesus would not say fuck. Very true. However, we can all agree on one point. God can say what he likes. The word is an English acronym and it was used by the king. Capital F, capital U, capital C, capital K. And it was hung on the door of the monarch's sons or daughters who were allowed to engage in sexual intercourse for royal procreation. It's for an acronym for fornication under consent of the king. Therefore, via ignorance, a ripple effect of rejection ensued, for each Christian is brainwashed into believing that the Bible is the word of God, as spewed from the pulpit, demanding their cult is correct and the 36,000 other competitors for the tithes are incorrect. The Jews, the inventors of craft, and corruption proved Yahweh in several ways by failed assassination attempts. To this date, five attempts by Moffat have taken place. Therefore, have used assassins to prove him absolutely. Some of the participants in these plots have loose lips and the word got out. Christ is back. We could not kill him. Christ is back, we could not kill him, is on YouTube. So as my name, Yahweh's name, spread, go lightly marshal, the lure enticed the former Christian fed up with rhetoric, stumbled across the endless rabbit holes until the prevailing winds of change, the endless catastrophes, poisons in food, air, water, 
had in effect begun to reveal the darkness of the Zionist Jews which had lured them into Palestine. This is the scapegoat prophecy, a realisation they were it, awakening them to the reality they are the kid goats of a demonic power that controls the synagogues by a subterfuge language, by the Talmud rabbis of the West. The question is, who in the West would care if every Jew in Palestine were wiped out, considering the atrocities perpetrated against the Palestinians, a people who have lived there for thousands of years? What is the real truth here? Awakening the sacrificial Jews to the very real, inescapable move to annihilate them and via World War III, the entire world leaving all creation a smouldering, uninhabitable, lifeless planet. Their long suffering at the hands of the rabbinical Talmud abomination expects their own Messiah. Where is it? There is only one God. And Rabbi Kaduri, he, the leading expert on the Torah and the Talmud, had insisted it was Jesus appear to him every day for a year telling him the Messiah was and is Jesus or Yeshua. Rabbi Kaduri left two, sorry, Rabbi Kaduri left specific instructions. One, Jesus is the Messiah and two, a second message not to be opened until after the death of Ari or Sharon. His corpse is sustained on a life support machine to keep that day from coming and the reading of the message. You've died at 108. 108 is ghost. He was known for his photographic memory and his memorization, memorization of the Bible, the Talmud, Rashi and other Jewish writings. He was a teacher and revered master at Nahalat Yitzhak Yeshiva Seminary. Chief rabbis looked up to him as a zadik, a righteous man or saint. Thousands visited him to ask for counsel or healing. And his followers speak of many miracles and his students say that he predicted many disasters. A few months before Kaduri died, he surprised his followers when he told them he had met the Messiah. He wrote the name of the Messiah in a coded note. Upon his death he gave strict instructions that his note was to be carefully guarded and then opened. David Kaduri, the rabbi's 80 year old son, confirmed that in his last year his father had talked and dreamed almost exclusively about the Messiah and his coming. Quoting, my father has met the Messiah in a vision, he said, and told us that he would come soon. Kaduri gave a message in his synagogue on Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement, just before he died. He mentioned that the Messiah would appear to Israel after Ariel Sharon's death. When Kaduri died, more than 200,000 people joined the funeral procession on the streets of Jerusalem to pay their respects as he was taken to his final resting place. Here is the note that Kaduri wrote. Concerning the letter abbreviation of the Messiah's name, he will lift the people and prove that his word and law are valid. In Hebrew, the letter reads, Yarim Haram, Weokiak, Shedvaro, Wetorato, Omdim, Yehoshua, Yeshua, Jesus. Quoting from the Old Testament, Hosea 3, verses 4 and 5. For the Israelites will live many days without king or prince. Afterward, the Israelites will return to the land and seek the Lord, their God, and David, their King. They will come trembling to the Lord 
in the last days. This is Kaduri saying this, right? In the Hindi religion, which predates Isaiah, it predates all other religions, Hindi Kalki is the Messiah, Yahweh or Jehovah, predicted as Jesus 4,500 years ago and that he would appear as a man in 2012. Messiah Jesus is coming soon. Getting back to the USS Enterprise is presently secretly in the Mediterranean. If it happened to have an explosion and sink, it would kill all on board. Its eight nuclear reactors under the weight of 16,000 feet of water crushed, exposing its fuel rods, impossible to retrieve. This would pollute the entire Mediterranean Sea, polluting all life in Europe, Africa and the Middle East via evaporation of plutonium. The Zionists intend to sacrifice the crew of 5,828 men and women. Israel is rumoured to sink it, an impossibility. Blame Iran. NATO and the USA launch a strike against Iran in retaliation, starting World War III. However, the defences of the carrier are far too sophisticated to be hit by an Israeli missile or a torpedo. Concealed in the reactors are bombs, similar to the Fukushima detonation. It was a test run, testing the general public's response. Destroy the fuel compartments and the armoury storage, the blast breaking the ship in two, sending it plummeting to the ocean floor 16,000 feet deep or five kilometres killing all on board and blame Iran. The American people, generally too dumb to think past the TV news, will drop their beer cans, leaning forward and demand revenge. The skull and bones delivering yet another Pearl Harbor and World War III. The consequences, world depopulation. The hidden agenda all along of the Satanists above Zionism. Bottom line, Adolf Hitler was a saint and he was right. Now the USS Enterprise was sent to England to be dismantled and turned into scrap. However, it was rearmed, refueled with another 25 years range of plutonium fuel. Looking at its statistics, it has been a well-orchestrated, long-drawn-out Zionist plan. It was christened and launched on the 24th of September in 1960 and scheduled for decommissioning on March the 15th, 2013, next year. At the period of 52.47 years, that number 5247 is Nimrod from the same as 5246 and means clear water. The 19,165 days of its life on the sea, the sea representing hell, 1916 is a reference to Revelation 19.16, quoting, And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of Kings and Lord of Lords. In the Greek dictionary, 1916 means to exclaim against, cry, Hebrew Dictionary, 1916, Hadam, from an unused root meaning to stamp upon a footstool. Now the Revelation 6, 7, 16 reads, They shall hunger no more, neither thirst any more, neither shall the sun light on them, nor any heat. The Revelation 16, 9, And men were scorched with great heat, and blasphemed the name of God, which hath power over these plagues, and they repented not to give him glory. Now the word heat in the Greek dictionary is 2738, from 2545, properly a burn, used abstractly of a glow, heat. That's the angel of the carrier in which...
and there is the word from 24th September 1960 until 15th of March 2013 2737 heat burn now the USS Enterprise sinking into hell the sea from Ephesians 4 9 quoting now that he ascended what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth hell Greek 2737 lower inferior locally of Hades in years 5247 in Greek superiority in rank or character prominence authority which of course that's what the USS Enterprise is about again the weeks 2737 sink into hell lower burn Sheol the sea Now, in service, it's maiden voyage, 12th of January, 1962, decommissioned, 15th March, 2013, that's the scheduled one. Burn, sink into hell, she holds the sea. However, on their own Facebook page of the USS Enterprise, they are saying it will become inactive from December the 1st, 2012. So this now becomes 50.889 years, 5088 means to be born, bring forth, be delivered, be in travail, or 5089, Tilo, to pull off, pluck, Hebrew means to lament, lamentation and mourn. Ephesians 4.9, now that he ascended, what is it? But he also, also descended into the first lower parts of the earth. Again, reiterating, 2737, inferior, lower, locally of Hades. Now, the ship itself has eight Westinghouse A2W nuclear reactors, four sets, Westinghouse geared steam turbines, four shafts, 280,000, what's that, SHP? <coughs> Horsepower. Okay, back to front. <laughs> And it reaches a speed of 36, sorry, 33.6 nautical. Notch. Oh, that's not, mm -hmm. okay. Which is 38.7 miles per hour, or 62.2 kilometers per hour. Imagine and this thing, it does 62.2 yeah, kilometers fast. per hour. Good. It has an unlimited distance as a range. It can go 20 to 25 years. Getting back to the number of crew on board, 5828. Uh, that being made up of the ship's uh, company, there's 3,000 officers, 2,700 sailors, 150 chiefs, 150 officers, air wing, 1,800, which is 250 pilots and 1,550 support personnel. 387 miles per hour, 622 kilometres. So we've got the number in the Greek dictionary of 622, which means to destroy fully to perish or lose, literally destroy, die, lose, mar, perish. 387 for the mile per hour in Greek is properly to dive out of home, that is trouble, turn upside down, make an uproar. So they've laid this thing out all out for a very long term plan and of course the size of the ship, the length of it, the width of it, the weight of it, the number of crew etc, the date launch, the date decommission, all uh, satanic uh, Freemasonry that uh, have all those numbers, which I'm explaining to you as the concordance of the King James Bible. Now, the class and type, the Enterprise class aircraft carrier has a displacement of 93,284 long tons, which is 94,781 short tons. Sorry, at a full load. <laughs> mm. Now its length, 1,123 feet, which is 342 metres, its beam, 132.8 feet, which is 40.5 metres, and the waterline, 257.2 feet, or 78.4 metres. The draft is 90, sorry, 39 feet, or 12 metres. Now, Job 5.12, he disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. There's a ship name, so what is happening here is God is going to stop what they're going to do. Yes. 
Verse 13, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness and the counsel of the froward is carried headlong. 14, they meet with darkness in the daytime and grope in the noonday as in the night. 947 is a reference to Titus 1.16. They profess that they know God, but in works they deny him, being abominable and disobedient, and unto every good work reprobate. Abominable Greek 947 from 948. Detestable, especially idolatrous and abominable. Now the long tongues, 93284, 932 in Greek, from 935 means properly royalty, that is rule, or a realm, kingdom, reign. Now Captain Owen Honours used to be the captain of the USS Enterprise. He was sacked for making and distributing um, pornographic videos on the ship. He was replaced by Captain D. Mewborn on the 4th of January 2011 and then he was replaced by William C. Hamilton on August 17, 2011. Now Yahweh wants Iran to understand this, that a Bible or a Koran is a weapon. It is impossible to reveal the word of God. They are all wrong. And Yahweh assures you that he has read little of it. But what he has read is 95% bullshit. Rewritten and manipulated by the Roman church. It, a Gentile nation. Their truth rests upon the smouldering bodies of millions that Rome burned at the stake. The New Testament was smuggled out of Rome and translated by Martin Luther, then William Tynesdale, into English. He was betrayed, caught and burned at the stake. In Belgium. The reality is the Bible is a trap and so is the Koran. They are both a trap because it is in the numbers of the Aramaic and Concordance numbers of the Bible that are divine. Now Yahweh has compared the hidden numbers of the Quran with the concordance and they agree of the terrible atrocities of the world of the dead. The world of hell happening in Palestine to the innocent Palestinians. Now Yahweh of course is here as promised as Jesus. He promised he would come again but as the Father, to judge the world and expose it in such a way that there is no argument. However, who believes it? Yahweh has no say in that. He has no say in who believes it. You have all been returned to hell as you have lived in lives past. And he doesn't care what anybody thinks because it is not an election. Yahweh is not bound by biblical prophecy unless he agrees with it. He is the word. The Iranian Persian people he had chosen by the words of his prophet Isaiah who prophesied of King Cyrus. He would rebuild the temple, the house of Yahweh, the God. Yahweh was the God of Isaiah and Daniel. The Cyrus Cylinder will be the rule of law and no cleric, priest or nation will remotely tell Yahweh, God Almighty, what he promised in the past or what he has to abide by. Ladies and gentlemen of all nations, this is judgment time. Israel is the abomination of desolation. It will be eliminated. The choice is yours, utterly destroyed by Iran and then the liberation of Palestine. The Palestinians are the holy people. 
the alleged law of Moses and the Ten Commandments. <laughs> Abraham about to slay his son. It is all bullshit. There are some angelic warnings that the Jews in their attempt to manufacture prophecies and rule the world will be their own undoing. We cross over to 2 Chronicles 36.22, quoting, Then they came to Zerubbabel and to the chief of the fathers and said unto them, Let us build with you, for we seek your God, as ye do, and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Ethad had done, king of Assur, which brought us up hither. 23. Thus saith Cyrus, king of Persia, all the kingdoms of the earth has the Lord God of heaven given me, and he hath charged me to build him a house in Jerusalem, which is in Judah. Who is there among you of all his people? The Lord his God be with him, and let him go up. Now, you can read this to yourselves, um, just freeze frame it, but I won't uh, drag it on. Now, uh, this is all to do with King Cyrus again. Uh, Ezra talks of Cyrus. Just remember that Isaiah predicted Cyrus by name and Cyrus wasn't born until 118 years after the death of uh, Isaiah. But the 118 years point straightly to Psalms 118 and I've covered that many times. So in other words, the foundations were laid, the false Jews prevented the work and it was finally built under Zerubbabel many years later. A decree was found in Persia which had been made by King Cyrus to build a temple. Now, um, that's more on the same and the dimensions. So you can go measure the footings right now and there it is. That's the Wailing Wall. So just, I wanted to show you this and I uh, want to remind you that uh, this is what it's all about, the kingdom, and I'll go back to where we were. Long way back, we're at 77. So what we've got, I have exposed uh, Google Earth several times. One thing I'd like to point out at the moment. Just go back to 77 so we can read about our meta thing. There it is. And it was found at Aksmetha. Right, now this is a place in Persia. So we locate that and we send um, the information, of course, to our other software to verify. And uh, this is uh, close to being correct because the Northern Hemisphere of Google Earth, which we've exposed several times now, uh, was highly inaccurate. Now it's reasonably accurate. But we confirm it, of course, with uh, GPS software which is uh, very old and it uh, hasn't been altered. Now, the southern hemisphere of the Earth is completely out. If you were to do the same type of uh, bearing, say from the uh, 30 degrees south latitude to the same angle, you would find that it's out by about four nautical miles. So you wouldn't have the message there. So what they're trying to do is cover up the fact that I've been born in Australia and have identified for years all of the measurements of Australia and uh, the uh, place of birth being the word God 3877 um, in miles and also the comforter from where I lived until I was 942 days old. That's how many times the word Jesus is found in the New Testament first title. Except it goes on and on and on. It also lines up with the last uh, position of the 25 degree latitude south of uh, November the 14th in 2012 which is uh, 942 miles to that same home or crib. Now what we have here then is 1077.26 miles, which is the diagonal, as you see the yellow line there, of that pyramid. But this here is a Photoshop. They haven't got an actual photograph of the pyramid itself. If you go out from this area, possibly two or three miles, you then see people walking around and cars on the road and it's from the photograph. Around here, which is the tourist mecca, nothing. But it's all to do with the layers and the shape of this particular pyramid, which we'll get to 
uh, directly. So what we have then is a line straight up through the major area of Palestine, through Gaza, direct to Iran, Persia and the city where the scrolls were found. Now in keeping with the Israeli, uh, the Israeli Zionist abomination, but I draw your attention to Google Earth this time, they have an aerial photo of the altar to the Lord. Wait a minute, not a photo at all, perhaps Photoshop or some other type of software. So what they've done is reduced it by 25 feet in width, so I'm making it smaller. They've blurred it so you can't see the summit uh, uh, as it should be and uh, it is actually twice the size of what we're going to show you. But the reason is this. It looks like that. So if you were to see that from a satellite and the sunlight was shining in on this in this direction, uh, that could be in the dark and this would be lit up. And it would show you the clear um, shape of eight different angles. And the reason for that is that it fits into the side of the Earth. Now I've drawn some that is quite uh, um, large in comparison because to give you some idea what it's doing. So there it is, the shape of the pyramid fits into the actual uh, radius of the Earth. So when we look at what we've done there, I've shown how this is just a, entirely a Photoshop. It's on an angle, you can't get directly above it. And on the left there, I've drawn that curvature. It's very, very slight, but you would be able to see it if it was back to size because it's been reduced by 25 feet wide or roughly uh, eight meters. This is the summit cap on the size it should be, and of course they reduced it down to this little tiny pile of rubble. So the summit platform is where the rejected capstone was to have been placed. This is the Lord being rejected by the end time. The people are represented by a pile of rubble, the stones. The internal parts are the divine parts, the king's chamber, the antechamber. The Lord uh, passes through that because of a, of a genetic key, which I've explained to you before. Now the perimeter at the base was 286.1, which is a spousal. The body of the pyramid came first, then uh, it lost the truth of the coming Lord. Then in 1944, January the 11th, the Lord is born, but religions of the devil reject God in the flesh. Now, I'm going to show you that. That there is an absolute slam dunk. That is the Commonwealth Bank in Australia. When it was originally set up when I was a boy, it was the common wealth of the people because it's been sold out to the Jews. Chase Manhattan now, majority shareholder. Yeah. Now Chase Manhattan is one of the Zionist banks that own the Federal Reserve in America. Now the summit itself <coughs> is uh, 572.2 pyramid inches wide. And that is actually twice 286.1. So if you've been following this, you know that the displacement factor of the Great Pyramid is the espousal number 286.1. And the descending passage points out into space it's near the North Pole, the polar star, but right beside that is the 286, YBS 286, which is lamb in Greek. So it's looking, your eyes are looking towards God, which is lamb in Greek. That's what it looks like. So um, this is off uh, a book that I um, was uh, able to buy, uh, a very, very well-known book uh, and this particular book um, is far more detailed than most of the uh, books that are in circulation and uh, if you want to read that or explain it I'll get the book show what it is so that you can possibly buy it. <clears throat> okay so the summit platform 572.2 pyramid inches wide aligns with solar eclipse number 202, which will occur on November the 14th, 2012. Now, the number 572.2 in British feet is 47.73 feet. Very important to remember these numbers. Now, 4773 in the concordance is a pile of stone. Then the number following, 3877, is the God verse total, meaning there are 3,877 verses within the King James 1611 Bible that have the word God in it. Now, 
the word God total is actually 4443 4, 4, in those 3877 verses. And then the number following, if you go back to the previous slide just for a minute, you'll see the number 6666 directly following 3877. Well, 6666 is the verse total that has the word Lord throughout the entire King James 1611 Bible. Now that's the book there. Um, it's called The Great Pyramid Dakota. And um, it is about 40 years old. It's based on a lot of the measurements by Pazizi Smythe and, and uh, other great uh, Scottish uh, investigators. And um, it's the accuracy that we're looking for. And all other computer generated uh, web pages talking about the Great Pyramid is uh, subject to um, being altered. But this book here, for example, 30 years old, another one I've got there is over 150 years old, right. and so on. Now, after the verse tells you, you've got again the number 572.2, divided by 2 is 286.1. Going back to the 4773, uh, from Proverbs 26, 8, and so he bindeth a stone in a sling, so is he that giveth honour to a fool. In the Hebrew concordance, it's sling and a heap of stones. That's what the pyramid is. Mm. A heap of stones within it are sacred numbers. Now, now I should say this. The reason we're in to... Uh, Modern feet, the, uh, the English uh, had originally the uh, pyramid inch as the standard measure, then they changed it under Elizabeth I. And then um, since December the 18th, 1922, when the English set up the lunation zero uh, at uh, 12.20 of the day, you would think it would be 12 o'clock. No, they didn't do that. They set it up at 12.20 because the moon, its position, if you take a a line from the centre of the Earth straight out to the Moon, where it exits the Earth, you measure that to um, the ancient city of the devil, which is On in Egypt, pronounced On, and uh, it was Joseph who today is thought of as being uh, England, had two sons, Manasseh and Ephraim. Manasseh or Manasseh is the oldest son, he, the youngest son was blessed, and there's a long story with that. However, it's all manipulated to see, to make it uh, fit the end time plan. However, um, what is unfolding is this heap of stones has now been examined by thousands of people that are gifted and have measured it precisely. And with that, they gave me the numbers and that was the mistake. So what we've got then is 3877. That's from the time the word God is found. And uh, the uh, 4773, can you read that from where you are now? No. A stone heap. <laughs> it means a stone heap or a sling. So you've got the David sling and all this kind of thing, mm. right? Therefore, we have a heap of stones representing the world population rejecting God. When he is reborn to the earth in the same way, I was born of the most royal line, no conception by supernatural means, because Mary was of the royal line and Joseph, her husband, was Joseph ben Jacob, that means the son of Israel. In other words, he was the king of Israel. The number of occasions the word God is found in the original 1611 is 3877, which is the distance from the maternity ward where I was born. And on and on it goes. However, what I've been showing you so far is pretty outstanding, but we're going to get into stuff shortly that is so astounding that um, you won't be able to grasp it for days. It is beyond human thought. So, that's the pyramid. They've altered it, obviously, for a reason. Underneath it is four corner sockets. It was laid out at 365.24. And you see there's a fifth socket down at the southeast socket. And it's called the fifth socket. So what's number five? That's Father. God. There's one of the sockets. And above it you see the other socket, which is the fifth. No one knows what it means, and that's why I'm telling you. So, 
the rejected capstone, the pile of stones, rejects the Lord today. In uh, Matthew 21, 42, I take it away from Israel and give it to a Gentile nation that will do what I'm saying. And that, of course, is uh, Iran. And it's prophesied in Isaiah. So it's, uh, and it's in, also in Ezra. It's also in Daniel. The word uh, Cyrus has found 19 verses. If you look at any other Bibles, like there's a blue letter Bible on the internet, look that up. It's supposed to be at the 1611. But what it is, is not the 1611. It's the revised 1611. Because they found out all these codes in it. If you punch in the word Lord, you get 7,000 of them, not 6,666. Or if you punch in the word uh, Jesus, you get 943. If you punch in other words like Christ or Cyrus, Cyrus, for example, is found about 13 times as opposed to the 19, which are the key verses that they want you not to see. Mm. Go down to the Charles line, he's supposed to be defended from, and he has said so himself, Vlad the Impaler. Would you really want that genetic line to be in charge of the world? Because you see what you've got today. Absolute terror. So the 2300 days of Daniel is dual. In this case, the days represent 2300 years. Most Bible scholars are aware of that. You add the 2300 years to a date, which is 457, when the decree of Cyrus was told to the masses of priests that had returned from Babylon by the a decree of Cyrus to rebuild the temple and of course it was lost and uh, now we have discovered it and they discovered it then and it's proven that uh, he did make that. So what we have then is a time when Christians of worldwide thought I would be sending on a white horse. Now Marshall in Hebrew is Mashal and it means parable, a uh, similitude, uh, proverb and everything is told by the words of Jesus myself at that time as being told in parables. So I was telling you in marshals. Hello. And that marshal is, of course, not to say it's a white bloody horse. It's everything but. It's certainly not a white horse. It's similitude. What does white horse mean? Well, Saddam Hussein ran around on one and so did the Queen. So white horse means power. The clouds mean obscurity. Etc. There's uh, the altar to the Lord, Isaiah 19, 19, 19, 20. Its height is 454.5 feet, or in pyramid inches, 5448, three, uh, rather 0.736. And uh, the Hebrew geometry of, of those two verses consists of only 30 words. Now, my mother, ashamed by her family, pregnant before wedlock, married on July the 20th, 1934, ironically confirming the moon hoax. 35 years, late, 35 years later. She altered the wedding certificate back to January the 20th to make my brother legitimate in 1934. My brother, however, fossicking through her drawer, discovered he was illegitimate, his birth unknown to him at that time, being illegitimate because he's only a kid. However, he was pretty smart and he worked it out. He told me that was a mistake. My brother's birth preceding mine by 8.88 years and the sunrise and moonrise for January the 11th, 1944, was 888 minutes. Jesus in Greek geometry. The duration for the 20th of July, 1944, eclipse was 222 seconds. I weigh 222 pounds. There are 222 verses with the word truth and 220 with the word wisdom. So you can start to see how it's all fitting together in a way that is spectacular. Two solar eclipses occurred in 1944, January 25th and the 20th of July. Coincidentally, that's the thing, it's coincidence, is there 177 days apart, which is the Greek meaning unveiled or uncovered. As for my father, I felt sorry for him because his swollen knuckles bruised from daily beating me on the back of my skull, nicknamed me the accident because of uh, I wasn't expected at all. Perhaps solving why I feel ill when I am near a tyre shop. The smell of new tyres squeezing through the military issue condom made of rubber in those days. Apparently he had stolen a box off the walls because he was a thief. He sold 11 of them and uh, on the black market, retaining one. He often pilfered while wandering about, waiting for his truck to be a bloat. And he was totally trusted. Everyone thought he was the same. Bales of wool transported from the wool sheds to the docks gave him the opportunity to do such things. And I just say that's a bit of a joke, but it is what he told me. I was the accident. 
Sorry, now we go to the 2300 days of Daniel. Now we get to the point. Here's a summary of the uh, word Cyrus in the King James Bible, only in the original, which I've got it on computer. So we've got 2300 days, which is 2300 years. We have January 25th, 457 BC. The Julian date is 1554514. Add 2300 years, we give you uh, January the 11th, uh, 25th it should be, uh, 1844. Then add the base of the altar to the Lord being 100 years, because everyone rejects the pyramid as being nothing more than a tomb for a pharaoh, which has got to be the stupidest thing that is all the time that come up with that idea. And we have January the 11th or the 25th, because you've got to take 10 days off or so, which uh, time altered over time. My rebirth date. From the 36524.24 base, the 50th layer is the floor of the king's chamber. The solar eclipse of January 1944 occurred 14 days after my birth, January the 25th, 1944. But the same date in 457 BC, which is the decree of Cyrus to rebuild the temple, when they got the good news, and there's your longitude and latitude, though, the same date. So now we get into some magic. Now I've said many times, Google Earth is a weapon to stop me. The measurements in the Northern Hemisphere are correct to a certain extent. However, the Southern Hemisphere is way up. So from, we're measuring from the eclipse of January 25th, 457 BC to my crib, it is out by four nautical miles. So we can do the adjustment, but I don't really like to do that. It just gives me the horrors. The distance is the same number as the height of the pyramid up to the rejected capstone, however, 454.54, which is 454.54 nautical miles. Now, I'm saying this quickly, you can get over it, do it yourself, do it slowly. So there's the distance from the solar eclipse. Now, the solar eclipse, of course, would not have been seen in the Holy Lands when it's down in Antarctica. But there's three occurred in 457 in Antarctica, BC, and one other. So there's four solar eclipses. So what we're going to do, we'll just read a little bit of this. In 445 BC, Persian king issued an edict giving encouragement to many Jews and exile to return to the holy city of Jerusalem, blah, blah, blah. This is why, as Jesus said, my father's house when I turfed out the money changers, which is what I'm doing today. John 2.16, and said unto them that sold doves, take these things hence, make not my father's house in the house of merchandise. So Jesus is talking about the temple of Yahweh, which is a wailing wall, the remains of it, which was destroyed by the Romans 70 AD, that the Jews are now bobbing back and forth on, not realising it's Yahweh, not their god Lucifer. So, they were gathering of people in Jerusalem, back from exile, Babylon, long to see Judah, gathered as an independent sovereign people, etc. 457 BC, a joyous occasion. So on January the 25th, 457 BC, the solar eclipse occurred thousands of miles away. Only God knows, I myself, one could say, so I reveal it now. So from the 25th of January, 457 BC, eclipse of Jerusalem in 7149 uh, nautical miles, Aramaic, city, from 7151, building, in a sense of flooring, city, from 7136, Quara to bring about, to impose timbers, roof or floor, to make beams, send good speed, God speed, or should be good speed, uh, come to pass. From the 25th of January, 457 BC, to the eclipse of 25th January, 1944, is a distance of 6,666 nautical miles, and that is why you go to the last one, which is in the book of Revelation uh, 2221. Lord Jesus Christ. So, nautical miles from the 1944 to my crib is 8,888.8. So what we've got then is the 25th of January on the 25 degree latitude, measuring to the crib is 8,888.8 miles, but measuring from the same solar eclipse back to the solar eclipse of 457 BC in Antarctica is 6,666 nautical miles. And that's how many lords there are and verses there are in the Quran. Hello, are you getting the picture? In the next slide, the area of five eclipses declared uh, location is 3478 square miles. And that's where we're going to show you a check me. The distance around the five sides is 18888.1 nautical miles. If I wanted to cheat, I probably could have made it an extra eight there. But I don't do that. 
John 1.45, Philip findeth Nathanael, and said unto him, We have found him, to whom Moses in the law and the prophets did write. Jesus, 2424 is the number, of Nazareth, 3478, is Nazareth, the son of Joseph, Greek Nazareth, the judged one. Here's the word here, it's written slightly different, the ordinary residence and home town of Christ. The guarded one, though. <laughs> ah, this is an extra socket near one of the four and I've told you before and then how it all fits together now. So we have the four sockets. We have 125, 457 BC, 622, 457 BC, solar eclipses, 7th July, 21st, 457 BC. Then we've got the 12th December, the 16th, 457 BC and the final one, which is 8,888.8 miles to where I was born in the crib for 942 days is January the 25th, 1944. This is what we got. You want to explain that? Mm. <laughs> Do you want me to explain that? Yeah, you go for it. You're doing a good job. <laughs> so we've got the length, 1888.1 nautical miles, five legs, 26227219 square nautical miles. However, nautical miles, remember that. In square miles, the number is 3478, which is the Nazarene and Israel, by 4912, which is Genesis 4910, and that number in Hebrew is parable. The same applies for the number 4911 and 12. Now, We've had this card here, which I got from the Commonwealth Bank, and they assigned a, um, a pin number to it. Two years ago, what? July. Two years ago. And that yeah. pin number is that number there, 3478. So, we've got the area by two flanks. One is 8888.8 miles to my birth. That's the red line you can see there. The other one is 6666 nautical miles from the first solar eclipse, which is the same date, but one is 125.457 BC and the other one is 125.1944. So with this software we can do that. This is Magellan again, highly accurate. So we've got 6666 verses in the Quran, 666 verses in the Bible with the word Lord, and only in the 1611 and no other, so don't even try finding it on the internet, it's all wrong, that the word Lord is found. The area within five sides is Israel, 3478, or the Nazarene. The distance from the 25th January 457 BC to January 25th, 1944, is 666 nautical miles. And then it goes on. Now, the date Lieutenant Cook sighted a comet sailing back to New Zealand, which he later measured with a Harrison clock, one of my relatives built it, it is 8,888 miles between latitudes. So, in New Zealand, he's heading towards that. He has been to Antarctica. There's a clue. Why did he go to Antarctica? Secret orders after he was doing a observation with his mathematicians, astronomers and botanists of the transition of Venus. So, he's trying to determine how far away it is to the sun by the crossing of Venus in front of it. Because they had no idea what they were doing. So we've got the 8888 days when he had spotted a comet and foolishly wrote it in a ship's log. So we then have to that date, which was the 30th of August, 1769, add the 88888 days and you've got my 69th birthday and that's the end of it all. Now, my granddaughter will be 8.8888 years on that date. She was born on the 21st of February night, 2004. And as I said, New Zealand sits between the latitudes of 888 apart. So we'll just look at that again as a reminder. That is an absolute impossibility. Could not have ever have been done without the modern computer and satellites and the ability for astronomers to be able to calculate back the precise locations mm -hmm. of these eclipses. And they go back thousands of years before that. So we've got January 25th, 
457 BC, June the 22nd, Friday 457 BC, July 21st, 457 BC, December the 16th, 457 BC, four in one year. And then the fifth one, representing a stone that is now missing underneath the footings of the Great Pyramid. And we see at the bottom there, you'll be able to stop it and zoom in with your magnifier, and there's your longitudes and latitudes that you can punch into your Google Earth to confirm what I'm telling you is true. Now, I did this with Magellan Light software. So what you'll get if you go into Magellan, as you go south of the equator, you'll have to be very, very careful. The only way to actually ascertain what is right, you go to the equator, go straight up, let's say 60 degrees, put a waypoint in on Google Earth and measure it. And you should be able to determine on the internet how long a degree is. Then you do the same thing for the southern hemisphere and you'll find it four kilometres or four nautical miles smaller. The Earth, in actual fact, is not smaller on one side of the bloody equator than there's the other. But they're trying to say that it is by subterfuge because they're Jews. All right. So we end up with, <clears throat> we've got to take into consideration and the people doing the Daniel prophecies have no idea. In fact, people in America in 1844 sold everything and was sitting on top of the hill waiting to be a... Uh, beamed up, Scotty. But of course, that's more bullshit that's been written by Paul and the rapture. The rapture doesn't actually occur in the Bible at all, so where they got it from is a mystery. But in any case, this is what it's all about. Now, we go to my youngest daughter, Nicole. She was born in Cornell, BC, Canada, November the 2nd, 1979. Now, now, a lot of you have seen this already, but there's a lot of Persians that haven't. So, we've got seven, seven days later, her stepsister, Rhiannon, which is the daughter of Mary Magdalene, which I had to find in Australia, which I did so on the 11th of May in 1997. Was born, she was born in Geelong, Australia. Now, Canada is seven hours less and one day behind Australia, if you might say. Therefore, December the 20th is the 19th in Canada. The girls are seven, seven, seven days apart. Seven, seven days is 2.127 years. 2127 is Zia in Hebrew. And it's in only one verse of the entire Bible, 1 Chronicles 5.13. Her mother, the reincarnate of Mary Magdalene, is a stickish two short planks, was born on March 19, 1947. <coughs> she gave birth to Rhiannon <coughs> when she was 32.75 years old. So we looked it up as 32.75 as a Hebrew number. And it's found in the same verse, right beside 2.127. That's an impossibility. There's 593,593 words, give or take a couple of thousand, because they're always changing it. What are the odds of words Zia and Jacan 2127 and 3275 would be in the same verse and side by side? Staggering assembly. What then are the odds that they are side by side and also with the word Michael, which is female Michelle, that's her na mother's name, or that the seven names total 31101 and the verse total of the entire KJV or the average is 4443. The number of occasions the word God, small slash, capital or small G, is found in 3877 verses, which is the distance from the maternity ward to the South Pole from where I was born. Or the average is 444.3 kilometres. The two homes, because we now change it to a distance, are built in Canada where my children were conceived and lived with my family, my wife and I at the time, is, there's the longitudes and latitudes of it. You put that into any Magellan software, I don't think you can do it, maybe. I haven't tried it in Google Earth, I don't waste my time with it, but maybe. And it'll give you 444.3 kilometres apart to those two addresses. Measuring the earth from where I was reborn to my wife in Lisdale, New South Wales, and to my home in Melbourne, 4 150 Nell Street, Greensboro, where I lived with Mary Magdalene, Rhiannon's mother, for a decade. The distance shown here is 777.7 kilometres, then returning back to my rebirth location is 1471, which is to be great with child, and that's only found in one verse, Luke 2.5, Mary, his spouse's wife, being great with child. Now, you see the deception here. It says, tax with Mary, his espoused wife. In other words, they weren't married. Oh, no. When you go into a woman, she is married to your son. So be careful going to a brothel. You might have taken a prostitute when the day of judgment comes. Luke 2.5. 
One verse only, it's Jesus in the womb of Mary. That's the whole point of it. So in other words, by subterfuge language, we subterfuge back and make sure these idiots include something because they say something blatantly wrong to disallow the uh, actual natural conception because they're what they're saying here is that she is still espoused to Joseph because he hasn't been into her yet. Rubbish. Now we have the new leg going here. We see from where I was born to where Eileen born, the local harlot from Lithgow, down to Michelle, Mary Magdalene, and the distance is 777.7. So if you divide that by 365.2424, you end up with the 2127. And we have the new leg at 118.9. And that's the distance in uh, where Eileen was born to my home and where I was born. And it's at a heading of 107.20, but the 118 is Psalms 118 through to 22. That's what it looks like. Extremely well measured with laser beams these days to one ten thousandth of a point, decimal point. So you take all those numbers, which is the distance 537.0278 times, or add to rather, 286.1, then the distance to the ceiling 230.05379 times a lunation, 29.53052, and it gives you the 31101 number. That's a side view. So you can freeze it up and have a look at it and become inspired by it. Now, Jesus regarded, the Jews regarded Moses as the lawgiver. What they skip over are his condemnations, the destruction by the Lord when he comes to the earth and judges them. The word God, or God, small g, is the English Bibles are grouped as all being the same. However, the gods of the Talmud and the books of Moses do not speak of the Almighty until the 665th verse this is the Almighty who is also Jesus which they don't want to mention either in the following slides a page is scanned from a book published in 1927 the author is Basil Stewart witness of the Great Pyramid we actually have the original copy signed by Dave Davidson who was also a man who reviewed the uh, many books on the Great Pyramid did it himself went there and measured himself now what they're talking about here is protocol 9, which of course, when you put your signature on it, you agree with it. And we're going to have a look at that now, which my lovely darling can read. <laughs> I'm going to get up and walk around. <laughs> Just thinking back, shall we break this? This is because we've got still twice this to go. This read that and stop. Okay, so read this, stop, then come back with part two. Protocol number nine. Quoting, the weapons in our hands are limitless ambition, burning greediness, merciless vengeance, hatreds and malice. It is from us that the all-engulfing terror proceeds. We have in our service persons of all opinions, of all doctrines, res restorating monarchists, demagogues, socialists, communists and utopian dreamers of every kind, we have harnessed them all to the task. Each one of them on his own account is boring away at the last remnants of authority, is striving to overthrow all established form of order. By these acts, all states are in torture. They exhort to tranquility, are ready to sacrifice everything for peace. But we will not give them peace until they openly acknowledge our international super-government and with submissiveness. The genuineness of these protocols is sufficiently proved by the fact that during the Kerensky regime, all copies of Professor Nihilus's book containing them were destroyed, while under present Soviet rule, the possession of a copy is sufficient to ensure the owner being shot at sight. 
that was in 1927, written by Basil Stewart. With that, we'll come back with the other half of this ripping yarn, Message for Our Rounds.